Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Ava, or Sci Sci Lifts on Instagram and TikTok, and here's Biggie Smalls. And today, I am filming a Friday vlog, but I also wanted to sit down separately and film a little chit chat video about my story and how I got to where I am today. So, I didn't plan anything because I want it to be really authentic and from the heart, and I do better when I just let it flow. Um, and maybe I'll leave some pieces out so I really want this to be an open conversation where it keeps rolling because if I forget something I'll come back and share it later on in another video or something but let me just tell you like my story as if we're sitting down together talking and uh, it's time for us to chat so hope you guys enjoy this uh, it's not easy to just come on the internet and just open up and unlock my heart uh, but at the same time it's what I do best so here goes nothing so my birthday weird thing to start with but that's what i was inclined to start with is december 18th 2000 and so i will be a senior at the university of maryland this year it's currently august 6th 2021 um and going into college up until college i was a dancer and i went into college as a double major in business marketing specifically and dance so i was set on pursuing dance i had started dancing when i was two years old my whole life i was never truly thin or anything um but i was athletic up until in my build up until about my junior senior year of high school when i started to put in a little more weight um i was hitting puberty a little bit later than everyone um i was like developing and also when I was a junior in high school, I fractured my ankle and it was the first time I had a serious injury that took me out of dance or physical activity a lot, but I was eating the same and if not eating more, snacking a lot, candies, really not watching what I was eating, but granted I was also still young, I was like 16. Um, so by the time I was going into college, I would say I had like a little bit more like body fat on me, but again, I wasn't big. Going into freshman year of college, I joined a sorority second semester. By the end of my freshman year of college, um, I was heavy, I was. I had gained a lot of weight and I definitely had sunk into my binge eating disorder without even knowing at the time. Keep in mind, I started therapy my senior year of high school for things like anxiety and depression. And just generally, I think therapy is great for anyone to get into. Um, you don't have to have a specific diagnosis given to you or anything. Sometimes it's really just great to have someone to talk to. Um, but like I said, the binge eating disorder wasn't diagnosed yet, but looking back, it was definitely there. I think I was weighing in at that point around 182 pounds. That was the heaviest I ever was. Then that summer, after my freshman year of college, I stayed at Maryland. I didn't come back to New York because I was an orientation advisor. Um, really wasn't working out a lot because at that point I was not going to be a dancer, dance major anymore. I decided to just keep it marketing in the business school. Dance was something I didn't want to be graded on. I also have chronic shin splints that were really getting in the way and I wanted it to forever be a love and a passion of mine and an escape. So I entered my sophomore year and at the end of that summer going into my sophomore year, I decided I wanted to make a change. I did want to lose weight um, and I went on the keto diet. This, at the time, was amazing. I loved it. I was losing some weight. Definitely not looking like I am now, but losing enough weight to be excited about the weight loss and be motivated to keep going with the keto. Um, I got into working out and lifting a little bit. Didn't really know what I was doing, but trying. Um, and around, I want to say October, November of 2019, still the first semester of sophomore year, I was still meeting with my therapist weekly about like ish on phone calls and stuff like that and she was starting to diagnose me with binge eating disorder and orthorexia and was presenting the idea of me going to treatment in maryland and like commuting to a treatment center once a week just for outpatient therapy to get some help i was denying this idea that i needed help i was convinced that i was doing everything right i was stuck in my ways and Deep down, I knew something was wrong, but I was fearful. I was lonely. I didn't want to admit this. And you know they always say admitting is the first step, so that's really what I needed to do, but I would not. I came home for winter break, um, and it just kept getting worse and worse. The weight was starting to come back because these binges were getting worse and worse. 
especially because I was depleted from those carbs as well. So it really was partially from restriction and also from emotional trauma that I was suffering from previous parts of my life and in that stage of my life. Um, and like I said, these binges were getting worse and worse where I was reversing any effect keto could have even had on me. I was gaining the weight back. It wasn't pretty. Um, I remember Christmas night, we were having a big family dinner and granted it was Christmas, but still after that dinner, I had such a bad binge, sobbing. My jeans were digging in, causing like cuts on my stomach because they were so tight. It was so painful. I got rid of the shirt I wore that night. It was really pretty. I loved that shirt, but I couldn't even look at it the same way ever again, just knowing what had happened in that shirt. Um, so yeah. Then I was supposed to go back to school a week earlier to get ready for sorority recruitment because I was recruiting for my sorority the second semester of my sophomore year. So January, 2020, I go back. Throughout recruitment, you know, they'll provide us with pizza to eat on our breaks. I ate maybe 10 slices of pizza, but only the cheese off of them because I was convinced I was going back on keto. So eating just the fats and not the carbs was better. Looking back, if I had had one or two or even three slices of pizza, I would have been fine. I was in such extreme pain from all that cheese and I was like, no, but I'm keto, so it's fine. I was so warped and just stuck in this mindset. Nothing at the time could save me, I thought. These deep, dark thoughts also that trickled in with the binge eating disorder were getting worse and worse to a point where I was saying some really, really scary things and I don't wanna put anything too serious, I guess, out on the internet, even though this in itself is very serious, but I was having some suicidal thoughts um, that I don't think I ever would have acted on. I don't know if I had the balls to do that, but I, I did not want to be alive, I would say that, and I was, of course, without saying, really scaring my family um, because I was calling my mom crying every night, calling my parents, my dad, Joey, anyone, and just helpless in the darkest hole, the deepest point of my life, it feels like it wasn't even my life. Looking back, I remember that pain so vividly, but at the same time, I'm so far removed from it that it feels like a different person. Um, so that continued to happen, and I remember I had just started classes, and it was in between the first weekend and second weekend of actual recruitment, rushing girls. And during that week, it was, a Monday night that I, I had one of the worst binges of my life to the point where the things that I was saying to my mother were just unbearable for any mother or anyone to ever have to listen, listen to. She was crying, begging me to come home, both my parents and Joey, he's also my parent, everyone, just they wanted me to come home. They were at the point, we will love you, we will take you in with open arms, which I am so lucky to say that they were there with me through it. I'm lucky that I allowed them to be there with me through it because they were begging me to come home. They were ready to accept me. They didn't care if I would leave school. They just wanted me to be okay. So I remember it was February 4th that I woke up that Tuesday morning and I couldn't put on the baggy clothes and pretend I was fine and go to class. I couldn't, it, it was done. I was ready, like I, I always think about it this way and I say, I was ready to look at myself in the mirror, wave the white flag, surrender to myself, accept my current reality so that I could move forward and, and live and progress and get out of this mess. No matter what it was gonna take, it was time. I, I would not put up with the danger and the terror that I was putting on myself anymore. So I packed a little duffel bag, found the next Amtrak that would take me home to New York, hopped on that train and came home. And the best decision I have ever made in my life was that. I went into treatment for binge eating disorder and orthorexia um, at a center near my home. I was not sleeping there overnight, but I would go and I would have breakfast there, lunch there. It was kind of like a school day and then I would come home to be with my family. Um, you know, I don't want to talk too much about treatment only because I don't want someone to use this video in lieu of treatment and hear what I have to say about it and then maybe think, oh, that's what they do in treatment, I don't have to go. I highly recommend treatment for anyone who is struggling. I do. But in treatment, I learned a lot about binge eating disorder and things I didn't even know about it. 
First of all, the binges themselves might not always be related to food. They refer to it as the tip of the iceberg where everything beneath the surface <laughs> Beneath the surface and below the water is the true pain that is causing this for me. It was insecurities Trauma, I am diagnosed with PTSD as well um, Just personal things in my life. I I don't share online um, Depression anxiety a lot of family things um, That really contributed to a pain and a deep hole inside of me that I was trying to fill with food Binges with temporary releases of serotonin to my brain that would cause such joy and fulfillment literally physically but also metaphorically that would subdue that pain for a little bit um, but the binges that I experienced uh, were I, I don't know if this is true but I, I feel like they could have been fatal I was getting myself to the point where I would pass out because my body couldn't stay awake anymore there was so much food in me that I was not bulimic but I would need to throw up and sometimes I couldn't control it I would just throw up because my body couldn't hold it anymore my, my body would not digest it it was coming out the other way um, and that is also what led me to be diagnosed with IBS. And still to this day, I am on medication for IBS because I destroyed my gut and my stomach. Fun fact, I think it's about at least 90% of serotonin is produced in your gut. Just thought I'd throw that in there. So it was crazy because I did medically withdraw from the University of Maryland for my second semester sophomore year to go to this treatment center. But then everyone ended up coming home a couple months later for COVID. Um, and so I was not taking classes. I was still in treatment and then I graduated from treatment. I recovered, but I never want to say I'm fully recovered because for anyone recovery is a lifelong journey and I will always preach that. Um, but from there on, I began to really fall in love with lifting as a way to connect with myself. I was meditating a lot as well, going on super long walks outside. Um, I did a lot of my workouts right here outside with 12 pound dumbbells. That's all we had here, resistance bands. And just, I was so eager to get into a gym when they would open to really start lifting, lifting, lifting even heavier. I was stacking things to make the weight heavier. At one point, Joey brought home those weights where you can like stack and unstack them to make them heavier or lighter. So, you know, doing my first set of like real RDLs, um, Romanian deadlifts with heavier weight and, you know, trying out all these things. Um, and the progress was not visual or physical at first. It was making a commitment to myself that I would stick to. And it's funny because I actually started with a two week Chloe Ting challenge. That challenge did absolutely nothing for my health, I don't think, unless you consider the benefits that it had down the road where it taught me consistency because it was finally something that I was sticking to, keeping that promise to myself. Like I said, I built trust with myself and that has stuck with me to this day. And that trust with myself has also trickled into the trust in myself to not need to binge and stuff like that. Um, so self-trust is one of the most important things in the world to me. Strength, something I talked a lot about in therapy that I used to struggle with even before being diagnosed was self-compassion and that is something that I have built so strong. I have such a love for myself. I look in the viewfinder right now and I'm like, that's you Ava, I love you, hi. I'm really proud of you. I can't believe I'm sitting here right now looking at you telling your story online for a YouTube channel that you were always dying to have. Wow, we're having a talk right now. Okay, let's stop. <laughs> but yeah, so I got into lifting and, you know, throughout the summer, more and more excited to go back to school and bring forth this, not, I was going to say new version of me and then I was like, not new version of me because it was still me, but yeah, new, brand new version of me that was my best self because I loved myself and I was ready to share that love with other people and not be like, oh, everyone loves me now because I'm fit and I'm healed. No, everyone gets to see the true Ava that isn't plagued by my eating disorders anymore. This is me, this is my heart and soul with this ugly mask thrown, thrown away and, and destroyed because I was done with that mask of eating disorders. I, I killed the villain and, and I was victorious and I was ready to triumph with everyone around me. Um, so I went back to school. I was getting better at tracking macros and losing that excess baby fat even more. 
um not even just baby fat i don't know why i called it that fat from binge eating disorder and just in general you know creating the life i wanted to live creating the body i wanted to have in a healthy way um and still working out falling more and more in love with lifting like i keep saying and uh october 22nd i said i love fitness i love looking at fitness accounts i want to bring something to the table I want to have my own account. I want to have my own little hub of Ava fitness, love, lifting, lifestyle, wellness, whatever you want it to be. And that is Sci Sci Lifts, October 22nd. Here we are today, August 6th. And I am just smiley and happy. And I feel amazing. And it's not like I'm perfectly healed. Like I always say, recovery is a lifelong journey. I still will always have little thoughts that sink back in, little binge urges. Every small victory is a big victory. Every victory is a victory. You know what I mean? So eating out, even though I'm pretty much okay with it now, I still consider it a victory when I do it. Um, resisting a small urge to binge that might come my way, still a victory, anything. Noticing a binge or an urge to binge and and thinking, whoa, this is something that might trigger me to binge. How can I deal with this emotion that's come up and fulfill myself in a way that, that isn't binging? Why do I want to binge? What will food do for me? Or on the other hand, am I really hungry? Because if I need to eat, let's eat, let's fuel my body. And screw those old keto carb fears, man. I love carbs and they're amazing for me. That's a whole win in itself. I remember one day in treatment, I shared a win there where I had gone to the grocery store after being in treatment for a while and bought apples and bananas for the first time since going keto. I wouldn't let myself eat those because of the carbs when I was keto. Those are some of my favorite fruits. If you know me, you know I love them. I have them like every day. And I shared that win in treatment. I said I went to the grocery store and I bought them because I love them and why did I convince myself they were bad? So yeah, I. that's all I'm going to share right now. I've been filming for almost 20 minutes. I don't want to cut this. I, I want to just upload it as it is. Like, I don't think I'm going to cut it. It's going to take a long time to upload to my computer, but I don't care. I want you guys to feel like we just had a real long chat. This is me. This is Ava. I don't need to edit this vi video, but I should probably stop rambling now so that it isn't too long. If I forgot anything, I'll make another video for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I hope you appreciate my honesty and my realness and appreciate me because i deserve that but if you don't that's okay <laughs> but i'm just saying i know my worth i know what i deserve and i know how pure my heart is and i am doing this out of the goodness of my heart saying if anything i want my struggles to be a blueprint for your success and that can be the roadmap to lead you out of a dark time if you need it so i mean that so sincerely i hope you believe it because i i really do and I love you if I know you, if I don't, if you support me, even if you don't, I hope you have a, I hope you have a wonderful life. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, that feels so silly to say, but you know, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, I'll see you soon, I'm gonna keep vlogging now. I love you. Wow, I can't stop saying that. Love, 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 okay. Happy sci-sci. <laughs>